Greetings, fellow interloper. This is Taylor. Nice to meet you. Not gonna lie, the timing of the Blighted Expedition was a little creepy. I had an awesome idea for a video at the top of my to-do list, and that was finding paradise mixed with how to travel between galaxies type video. Oddly enough, the current expedition starts you at Galaxy 89, which is just before a lush galaxy. So doing this expedition gives you an easy way to get to a lush galaxy. So if that's something you're after, make sure to complete the current expedition. As of today, I believe there are about five weeks left to do so. But traveling between galaxies can be fun. After all, there are 256 total galaxies to explore. Many newer players are completely unaware of this. And yes, as a side note, I'll mention that mysterious Galaxy 257 Yilsrusimil, Yilsrusimil. Rumor has it they removed it because you couldn't pronounce it. Actually, I take that back. If that were the case, we'd have like 12 galaxies. My theory is that they like the number 256 given its square root. Check out the big brain on bread. You're a smart mother- Fundamentally speaking, there are actually four types of galaxies. Newer players might find this interesting. These types don't really appear any different from one or another, but the types of planets they contain are weighted by their type. You can find the four types all within the first 10 galaxies. So the first one, the starter galaxy, everybody knows is Euclid. That's what we call a normal galaxy. Harsh, which is galaxy three, is Calypso. There's an empty galaxy, which is galaxy seven, Budolonger, and everyone's favorite, Lush, which starts at Galaxy 10, Isentom. Not only this, the entire planetary order is actually known, as well as their type. This leads me to my graphic that I devised in order to show you all 256 in order and their types. So <laughs> bear with me here. Before you have a stroke looking at this, it's actually pretty simple. The order is set up in a serpentine pattern, where the first line moves left to right and then moves right to left, as opposed to jumping back to the left as a typewriter would. If there's any fantasy football players out there, you're pretty familiar with the serpentine idea. Now the colors represent the system type, with black being normal, red is harsh, white being empty, and green is lush. But if you're looking to go exploring on your own, let's go through the steps you'll need to take for a smooth transfer into the next galaxy. All right, so the first way to get to another galaxy, I'll be honest, I almost forgot to put this in because it's so damn easy. If you're used to playing with multiplayer off, you're gonna want it on for this. Now call in the anomaly and head inside. Since multiplayer's on, it'll be bustling with other players. Now just head up to the teleporter. Once you enter the menu, you'll see a button that says space anomaly. This will show you a base from every player that's in the anomaly. Which base it chooses from each player is a mystery to me. Maybe somebody knows and can leave a comment. In any event, that's kind of helpful because while most of the time they're gonna be in Euclid, every now and then you can come across a cool galaxy that you've never been to. Okay, like right here for instance, there's a Hilbert Dimension portal. There's no quicker way than this if you're wanting to go to a galaxy you've never been to. Remember, if you do take the portal, make sure and build a base in that galaxy or you won't be able to return there. Obviously, that's far from dependable. So let's move on to the main way you're gonna be switching galaxies. Side note, I've just noticed the game is doing this and it's really bugging me. Hopefully it's the game and not my Xbox. First off, there are some things you really need to have unlocked and installed for the best possible experience. I would highly encourage you to complete the main storyline before you go jumping from galaxy to galaxy. You'll see why in a second. So item number one is to get all 16 portal glyphs. If you've finished the main storyline, then this shouldn't be a problem. The alternative is tracking down travelers. These are the ghost-like people you'll often see at space stations, but sometimes they show up at trading outposts or even minor settlements. Your best bet is the space station though. Just engage them in conversation until the menu closes. You'll wanna engage them once more and proceed to ask them where they're from. They'll give you coordinates to a grave marked by an atlas icon. Once there, just click it, scroll through the messages, and accept your glyph. 
So long story short, if you don't have any of the glyphs yet, and don't really feel like going through the main storyline, then you'll have to repeat this process 16 times. 16. What an interesting number. No, I will say there is an alternative to getting all 16, and that's just getting the first one. So let me explain. You can enter the first glyph 12 times, but I'm going to circle back to this in a minute. After that, it's really nice to have a freighter which is upgraded with all three Stellar class hyperdrives. With a fully upgraded freighter, you can call it in no matter what color system you're in. And the reason you call it in is to get the Exocraft. Assuming you have an orbital Exocraft materializer installed on your freighter, you can get blueprints to this up from the construction terminal in the anomaly. But if you don't have any of the hyperdrive upgrades, it could cost you up to 25 salvage frigate modules, depending on what you've already unlocked on your freighter. These are the currency that you'll need to unlock anything freighter related from the upgrade terminal on the bridge. These modules can be obtained by attacking visiting freighters. You just fly up and see if you can spot salvage frigate modules somewhere in their hold. Just fire on it until it explodes and it'll be added to your inventory. Hopefully the drops for these haven't been nerfed because when I was putting this together, it took me a while to get even two of these. It seems that the non-pirate systems are the way to go, as the freighters and pirate systems all carry contraband. I could be way off, but I couldn't find one salvage frigate module in any pirate system. But if you don't want to screw with the freighter upgrades, it's not a deal breaker. So just to clarify, if all you want to do is just switch galaxies maybe once, or bounce between Euclid and that galaxy, you may not want to screw with all the freighter stuff. If that's the case, I would just opt for having the materials to build an Exocraft Geo Bay whenever you land. You don't have to, but it's a long trek to your ship once you're in the new galaxy. Plus, you can upgrade the radar to find monoliths whenever you want. So, first things first, you need to get to the center of whatever galaxy you're in. To do this, we need to find a portal, and to find a portal, we need a monolith to show us the way. So, what I'm saying is we need to find a monolith. I know what I just said probably sounds a little confusing, so let me put it in graphical terms. In order to find a monolith, if we're not using the Exocraft, we need to get a map. This map will lead us to a monolith. Once we interact with the monolith, it will then point us to a portal. Hopefully that makes sense. Quick side note, I had heard that the Positron Ejector was nerfed. Don't believe it! Alright, so now we're going to find a monolith using the Exocraft. Land on any planet with life on it and summon your Exocraft. Now hop in and push down on your D-pad to get to your radar. Now you want to scroll all the way to the right until you get to scan for alien structures. That's the one you want. Now, this is the option where you have the Exocraft with the upgraded radar. If you don't want to do it with the Exocraft, which I would recommend, then you're going to have to find a monolith with a map purchased from the station cartographer. That's the one sitting right next to the teleport. You'll need to have nav data to exchange for these maps. When you go to exchange, make sure to get at least three alien cartographic data maps. Activate the maps until you see that a monolith was found. So our first try, we found an alien artifact. That's not what we want. That's why we bought three of them, just to be on the safe side. Scan again and hopefully we'll get a monolith. At this point, it's important to know what kind of system you're in, as in what the dominant life form is. The reason for this is that the monolith will ask you for a tribute to show you where the portal is. So if you're in a Gek system, It'll want a Gek Relic. A Corvax system requires a Corvax casing, and a Viking system requires a Viking dagger. If you don't have any of these, don't sweat it. Just jump in your ship and do a scan for a trading post. Once you're there, you can buy them off any MPC pilot that lands. You can also sometimes get them at trade terminals or NPCs that just randomly land. All right, so the next tip is important. It's happened to me numerous times. If you leave your monolith to go get one of these items, drop a save beacon. Otherwise, that marker that showed you where the monolith was, now that you visited it, 
it'll disappear and you won't be able to find your way back. And you'll have to look for another monolith. So the monolith is going to ask you a question. If you get it wrong, just reload your autosave. So once you get the correct answer, you'll need to click on it one more time to request a portal location. This is where it will ask you for a tribute. Oh yeah, so I should mention that if you keep your relics on the freighter, you're going to have to move them back into your exosuit. Even though you can build from the freighter and pretty much get any other needed material straight from the freighter, but for some reason the portal doesn't see you as having it, even if your freighter's in the same system and you have the matter beam installed. Now all that's left is to take to the skies and head over to the portal. Once you're there, you're going to put all 16 glyphs to good use by entering a special address that will put you either one jump away or directly on the planet before you make the jump to the next galaxy, like dead center. But before we can get this baby working, we got to charge it. And to charge it, we need a variety of elements, which fall in four different categories. Earth elements, like dihydrogen or cobalt. Stellar material, like copper or cadmium, emerald and indium also work. Organic elements, like carbon and oxygen. And lastly, we need catalytic elements, like sodium or sodium nitrate. And I do want to point out something that happens, and... When you're new to the game, you're not sure what it is. You're kind of frustrated, and I don't want you to be frustrated. When you put all these elements in, you're assuming you're fully charging. But if we pause it and look at the very bottom symbol, the dragonfly, you can see it's only about 25% charged. And these things need to be fully charged. So when you put your final element in and nothing happens, this is what happened. So just kind of scroll around and find the one or two that didn't get fully charged. Now, I've mentioned this before, and I had a few comments saying that you can just enter the first glyph 12 times, and it will put you at the center. In my experience, this has been pretty hit and miss. It does get you pretty close to the center, but you're still quite a few jumps away from the actual center. But if you really don't want to hunt down all the glyphs and you just have one, this is a great option for you. But eventually, you're going to want to have all 16. And another quick tip is when you go into photo mode, you should have the planetary address in the lower left corner. If it's not there, you can just toggle it on, hitting triangle on PlayStation or Y on Xbox. So wherever you are in the galaxy, you'll always be able to get the planetary address. And for the newer players who are a little confused about teleporters and portals and monoliths, hopefully this has cleared everything up. Just know that portals can only go within their own galaxy. You can't take a portal from one galaxy to another. The only way to do that is if you have a base in the other galaxy and you teleport there. So here's the address. I'll freeze the screen to give you time to pause the video and screen grab it or write it down, whatever you want. All right, it looks like we've arrived. Let's fly up to see how close we are to the center. Pull up the galaxy map. We're one jump away from the final system. All right, so once you arrive in the final system before the galaxy center, you're just about ready to take the big jump into the next galaxy. Well, look at that. That looks pretty interesting. So if you're ever at the center of 116, make sure and stop at Taylor's Last Stop Cafe, located on the chilly planet of Whiskey Barrel 116. Okay, we're almost there, but we do have a couple important things to do. First off, you'll want to switch out your multi-tool as well as your starship. This isn't a requirement, but trust me, you're gonna wanna swap them out. Just get a cheap C-Class for each. The reason for this is simple. Once you arrive at the planet in the next galaxy, whatever tech you've installed in your main inventory will be busted and require repairing. Now if you've spent some time getting mods and upgrades, then this can be a major pain. It's a whole lot easier to make the trip with an ugly C-Class ship that has next to no tech in the main inventory. Now that we can have nine ships, you can keep it as your galaxy jumper. It's pretty handy to have, I must say. The same holds true for the multi-tool. Everything will be a hot mess on that one as well. I have a crappy old C-Class that I make my jumps with. I never repair it, I just equip it for jumps. The funny thing is, when I was recording my gameplay for this video, I forgot to swap out my multi-tool. So you'll get to see firsthand how much of a pain it can be if you don't do this. 
Luckily, I pretty much had all the required items to get quickly back up and running. With all that out of the way, you just need to make sure to have two more things. Depending on which system you're leaving, you might need a special hyperdrive, such as an Emerald or an Indium drive. So if you're good there, then all that's left is to make sure your hyperdrive is at 100%. It has to be fully charged to leave the system. Even if it's just a tick lower than full, it won't work. Now, the moment of truth. Once inside the galaxy map, you just need to move your right thumbstick in the direction of the center. You'll need to hold it until you see this symbol pop up. Continue holding it until the meter fills up and your trip begins. Now, just sit back and enjoy the ride. Make sure to turn the music up, because it is one of my favorite pieces of music from this game. It never gets old and I often find myself humming it in the shower. Yeah, I know. Definitely a sign I need to get out more. You are one pathetic loser. Once the show is over, you'll find yourself in your new galaxy. It'll be very reminiscent of how you first start the game on a new save. You're far away from your ship with your visor busted. And remember when I told you everything would be a hot mess? Yeah. I don't think I'm ever going to forget to swap my multi-tool out again. Oof. It could have been worse, I suppose. This is a relatively new one that I was still configuring mods for. This is where it's nice to either call in your freighter and summon your exocraft, or just build an exocraft geobay. You can delete it and get all the parts back and then cruise over to your ship. And yeah, as expected, your ship will need a little TLC because everything will be busted in the main inventory. But again, if you have that crappy C-Class ship, that won't be too hard. Now, all that's left to do is throw a base computer down, and after that, you'll now have an easy way to get into the system via teleporter. It's a nice feeling, gotta be honest. I have a base in every lush galaxy, and it's fun to just jump from one to another whenever I feel like it. Alright guys, I think that's gonna wrap it up. I hope you've already hit the like and subscribe for me, but also for you. If you enjoyed this video, then there's plenty more where that came from, trust me. Also, if you happen to still be watching, don't forget Dee Dee and Jax return for their Season 2 debut on Star Wars Day. Yep, May the 4th. So mark those calendars. It's going to be a fun season, with lots of surprises. Thanks so much for watching. This is Taylor with Whiskey Barrel Gaming, reminding you to have an S-Class Day.